Hello and welcome to our time series smoothing tutorials. In one of our previous videos, we demonstrated how to make a smooth time series using Brown's linear exponential function in NumExcel. You can click on the annotation to watch that video again, or click the link in the description box below. We use the International Airlines passengers data for our example to show you how to find the optimal value of the smoothing factor using the Excel data table and the sum of squared errors, or the SSE. In this video, we'll also make a smooth version of the time series using Brown's linear exponential function, or the LESMTH. But this time, we'll let NumExcel itself find the optimal value of the smoothing factors. Let's begin. Select the cell in D4. And in the formula toolbar, type LESMTH and click on the FX button for the dialog box. Similar to the previous video, in the X field, select the cells range for the input data, which starts at C4 in our case. Lock the starting cell so that we could copy it to the cells below. For the chronological order, type 1 for ascending. In the alpha field, you can specify an initial guess for the NumExcel optimizer to use, or you can leave it blank. Under optimizer, type true to activate it. In the Forecast Horizon field, or T, select the cell in A4. Copy the formula to the rows below it. Then plot the smooth time series alongside your original data. Let's compute the sum of squared errors, or the SSE, for the two time series. First, select the cell in G4. Then type SSE in the formula bar and click on the FX button on the left to launch the dialog box. In the X field, select the cells range of the original time series. And in the Y field, select the cells range of the smooth time series up to the end of the original data set. Don't include forecast. Now click OK. And there you have it. Note that the computed SSE is even lower than the one we calculated earlier, which was 209,000. This is because the NumExcel optimizer computes a new alpha for each data point, instead of applying the same alpha for all data points like we did before. Also, in the previous video, we restricted the alpha value to a finite set of values. But NumExcel's optimizer can use any value and isn't limited. That is it for now. Thank you for watching.